According to Paul, the, the author of the book on Stalin's career as an ethnic cleanser, Stalin's regime, this is the regime which Wirth proposes as the model for solving America's nationalities problem, quote, pursued ethnic cleansing as a part of its overall security policy. That began in 1937 when Stalin deported Soviet Koreans to Central Asia. In 1941, he deported the Volga Germans to Siberia. My uh, daughter-in-law is, her grandmother was Volga Deutsch, and uh, she grew up in Siberia. Her grandmother ended up in Siberia as a result of this deportation policy. And in 1943, he deported the Kalmyks from their home just west of Astrakhan to Kazakhstan. The 1937 deportation of the Koreans had become secret, but the deportation of the Volga, Deutsch, and the Kalmyks were announced in official Soviet Yukuses when their ethnic Soviet republics were abolished by Stalin. Since Worth was working as one of the leading theoreticians of our military intelligence establishment at the time, it is unlikely that he was unaware of what was going on. Worth would eventually write at least eight chapters of the American Dilemma while at the same time writing reports for the OSS and the OWI. In addition to spying on the ethnic population of Chicago, which is where it was based, Worth also wrote up a report for the OWI on the famous race riot of Detroit in, in 1943, a report which dovetails completely with the promotion of social engineering on racial matters which suffused the American Dilemma. Our position, now this letter is Clyde Hart, written by Clyde Hart, uh, Worth's boss at the OWI, in response to a letter that uh, Worth wrote. Again, Clyde Hart responding to Worth's letter. Our position has been that the race problem is not one to be dealt with in the main by informational programs. It requires rather direct, sensible readjustments of the kind you suggest in housing, recreation, and health facilities, transportation, employment practices, recruiting policies and programs, army camp arrangements, policing, etc. In other words, uh, we're not going to talk about it, we're not going to debate it, we are simply going to change the living arrangements under which most people uh, live in this country. These two issues, the behavior, uh, the behavior of Negroes from the South and ethnics from the North as it impacted the war effort, were really two sides of the same coin, what Lenin and Stalin would have called America's nationalities problem. Since the Carnegie Corporation had imported, it proposed Myrdal's study in 1937, the nationalities issue had been on the establishment's mind for some time before America's entry into the war but the issue was given new urgency by America's entry. Suddenly the country which had lately suffered huge unemployment was now faced with a labor shortage. Total mobilization required unprecedented numbers of men to staff the armed forces, but more importantly it required even more men to staff the factories that would build the armaments that those men needed to defeat fascism. America had traditionally solved its labor problems by unlimited immigration, but that source of labor ended in 1924 when the nativists put immigration quotas in place. Now that the war was on, the group, that group of people wasn't available anyway. That meant that there were only two sources of untapped labor in the United States, women and Negroes from the South. The people in Chicago, quote, whose national origin made them suspect, can live, close quote, continued living in their ethnic neighborhoods after the war ended but with fascism defeated, the same group of people who were concerned about their loyalty before could now devote their efforts to engineering them full-time now. 
As Worth had indicated in his letter to Clyde Hart, and as he had indicated in various passages in the American Dilemma, social engineering would be focused on race and housing. Integration was defined by Louis, Louis Worth and ratified by the Supreme Court in the Berman and Brown decisions, that, and that meant first, of, and first and foremost solving America's nationalities problem, and that meant, meant bringing ethnic neighborhoods under control. Once the war was over and the danger of German, and Itali German national socialism and Italian fascism receded, the same groups who were living in the same impenetrable ethnic neighborhoods in, Sh in Chicago began to be identified more and more by their religion and less and less by their country of origin. Even as early as 1941, Worth, as I've already mentioned, was concerned about a corresponding shift in religious affiliation of the American population, which created a nation now a little over one-third Roman Catholic. In the, in the parlance of psychological warfare, ethnic would increasingly come to mean Catholic, especially in the period following the war. And the ethnically balkanized cities of the North, it was a group of people who represented the greatest obstacle to worst concept of integration. This group, much more so than the challenge posed by de jure segregation in the politically and economically insignificant South. 1947, uh, an ex-minister, ex-socialist, and social adventurer uh, known as, uh, by the name of Paul Blanchard went to the library to do research on Catholic medical practices and was appalled at what he wrote and so wrote an, an article in The Nation expressing that, which found immediate and a, a huge response and so he decided to write a book, and two years later his book, American Freedom and Catholic Power, appeared. This book was uh, saluted by the entire WASP establishment in America. People like William O. Douglas, John Dewey, McGeorge Bundy, and the American Puritan scholar, Perry Miller, all endorsed the book. Blanchard, in his book, mentions, number one, Catholic neighborhoods as the source of Catholic political power. Number two, he mentions Catholic nuns as the basis for the Catholic school system, without which the Catholic school system would collapse because the, people, the Catholics could not afford to pay their teachers. He also mentioned feminism as a way of liberating uh, Catholic nuns. And he also mentioned Catholic fertility. In other words, Catholic sexual practices. He mentions in the book, uh, Bertrand Russell's greatest fear was that America was going to become a Catholic country and that they were going to do it by the numbers, which is to say by demographic increase. 